Today's episode is the third in our series where we will help you find out if doing your own bookkeeping is right for you. It isn't right for everyone, but after listening to this series, you'll have a good idea if it's a good fit for you. Listen in and find out how you can tell if you are ready to do your own bookkeeping. You're listening to the Mastering Your Small Business Finances podcast, where we get straight to the point on topics that ultimately affect your bottom line. That's right, as an entrepreneur with a small business, money management, growth, marketing, they all affect your bottom line. I'm your host, Chris Ponick. I'm a certified public accountant, and I've been helping small business owners like you navigate and easily understand these complicated topics for over 25 years. I'm a wife, a mom, a grandmother, and a small business owner myself, so I know your time is valuable. In my free time, I make the best sugar cookies and have mastered an amazing chocolate chip cookie recipe. And that's not just my opinion. You're in the right place. I promise your time will be well spent here. Each week you'll gain confidence and clarity while making a successful impact on your business and grow your bottom line. Get comfy, grab a cookie, and let's get straight to the point with this week's episode. Are you looking for a computerized software solution to do your bookkeeping? I highly recommend checking out QuickBooks Online. I've been using QuickBooks myself for over 20 years and they really know how to streamline processes and make your bookkeeping and recording your transactions simple and easy. QuickBooks is one of the top software solutions used by small business owners and I would say that over 95% of my clients are currently using QuickBooks for their businesses. One of the features most of my clients and I take advantage of is the option to set up bank feeds. You simply link your bank account to your QuickBooks account and QuickBooks will automatically import each transaction into your QuickBooks file. You'll save a ton of time not having to manually enter each of these transactions. You simply review each of the transactions and make sure they're getting recorded to the appropriate account. And then click one button and they're in. Want to know more? Head over to financialadventure.com slash QuickBooks and learn how you can save 50% off of your first three months. Welcome back. Today we're looking into ways you can tell if you are ready to do your own bookkeeping. You may not have everything set up to do your own bookkeeping yet, but after listening to this episode, you'll have a good understanding about what you need to do to get everything in order. We're going to start from the beginning and make sure you've registered your business and have everything set up to start operating your businesses. We talked in the first episode about how you need to make sure you have separate business accounts So once you have your business registered, you want to open your business accounts up. It's very important that you have a separate account for your business and that you don't mix your business and personal funds in the same account. This means you should have a separate business checking, savings, and credit card account. Why is this so important? It's going to be a huge time saver if you keep your business transactions out of your personal accounts and vice versa. And number two, if you're using your personal account to purchase business items, it's a good possibility that you might forget about that and then you won't be tracking those items and you might lose out on any of those expenses that you're using your personal accounts for. We talked about having a process for how to do your bookkeeping, including how you'll record your transactions, how you'll store your receipts, and when you'll do your bookkeeping. If you haven't already listened to episode three, what do I need to do my own bookkeeping? Please go back to that episode. It has a lot of great information you'll need to do your bookkeeping. You'll also want to make sure you have your bookkeeping system in place. Whether you're using a computerized software system or if you're fine with using a spreadsheet or other manual system, that's fine too. Just be ready to start using it. Even if you don't have very many transactions at the beginning, this is a great time for you to get started and learn how to use your system before you have a lot of transactions in the future. Organization is going to be key to your success here. If you don't have these processes in place, you'll find it harder to get started, which will mean your bookkeeping will start to pile up, and yes, it's going to get behind. Before you know it, you're so far behind, you know it's going to take a long time to catch up, and you're going to dread doing it, or worse off, you won't do it at all. Get everything set up from the beginning so that you set yourself up for success. I always tell my clients that 
especially when they're just getting going and they have very few transactions, that's the best time to start doing the training, start learning what you need to do, because it's not going to take you a long time to enter those couple of transactions in, but you'll get the full overview of what you need to do each and every month. Another way to know if you're ready to do your own bookkeeping is if you want to have more control over your finances and have them up to date. If you wonder how much you had in sales for the month, or you want to know how much you paid in advertising for the year so far, when you do your own bookkeeping, you'll have all this information at your fingertips and you can find it quickly. If you're using a computerized software system, it makes it even simpler. All you need to do is open your software, click into a report, and find the information that you need, just like that. And it's very easy to be able to compare different years. If you find you want the ability to do transactions in real time, like sending an invoice to a customer right after the sale takes place, or you want to print a check to a vendor that you'd like to get out in the mail that day, what about printing a quick report for the bank or looking into a question that a customer is having on their account? Having the ability to do these tasks are a huge bonus when you're doing your own bookkeeping. When you feel like you understand enough about your business and how the money coming in and going out of your business affects your finances, this is a good indication that you're ready to do your own bookkeeping. Let's recap this episode. You want to make sure that you have your business registered and you have everything set up and ready to start operating your business. You want to make sure you have separate business accounts. So if you need a business checking account, savings account, credit card. You want to make sure that you have your bookkeeping system in place and that you're ready to start entering transactions as soon as you have them. You start to feel like you want to have more control over your business finances, and you want the ability to do transactions in real time. When you feel like you understand enough about your business, it's a good indication that you're ready to do your own bookkeeping. If you're considering doing your own bookkeeping, be sure to grab our free guide on the five essential strategies for stress-free bookkeeping. Go to financialadventure.com slash five essentials to get your copy. That's the number five E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-S. And what's at least one thing you'll take away from this episode that will help your business succeed and grow your bottom line? Do you need to be held accountable? Join our private Facebook group and post your action item. We'd love to support you. Thanks for taking the time to tune into this episode of Mastering Your Small Business Finances. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it for you, I'd love for you to give it a five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. Visit financialadventure.com for the show notes, links from this episode, and while you're there, leave a comment if you have a topic you're interested in learning more about that affects your bottom line. If you're looking for a community where you can ask questions and get feedback about your small business, join my private Facebook group. You can find the links to this group and more on financialadventure.com. And remember, any financial information shared on this podcast is not to be considered professional, financial, or tax advice and should not be solely relied upon. Please consult your CPA or tax advisor for an opinion on your specific circumstances. I'm looking forward to having you tune in next time. Until then, dream big, follow your heart, and love what you do. Thank you.